Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and hypnosisdownloads.com and welcome to How to Stop Lip Biting, five tips to help you stop abusing your smackers. Okay. Now, by a series of coincidences and misunderstandings, I ended up at an afternoon cocktail party for uh, local SIPs, semi-important people, and found myself chatting banely to a distinguished gentleman about affairs of the day, and he was a local dignitary. Okay. And I thought I was being lucid and engaging, you know, a man of the world, and he was using long words, and, and I was trying to, you know, and so forth. And pride really does come before a fall. As he spoke earnestly, my teeth missed the hors d'oeuvre for which they'd been aiming, and I bit painfully into my own lip. Ouch. Now, you'd think that after a lifetime of eating practice, these kinds of nibbling errors would have been ironed out but apparently not, and I winced, pretending that nothing was uh, awry as the pain stabbed my lower lip like, you know, Norman Bates in a motel shower. Said suited man continued talking, uh, still using long words, and I nodded manically and wondered if he questioned why his ideas on local car parking were causing my eyes to uh, fill with tears. That experience was an idiotic accident, but some people bite their own lips habitually when they're nervous or bored or stressed or distracted. Lips are, of course, living things that can be pierced, shredded, ripped and torn, leaving them bleeding and scabbing. If you want to stop biting your lips habitually, follow these tips and like me, you'll reduce the incidence of auto lip biting to just the very occasional mischew that we all sometimes experience. So tip number one, spot your own triggers. The clue is in the word emotion. Emotions want motion. That's why we have emotions for movement. Whether we're anxious, angry, or elated, we want to move. That's what emotions have us doing or want to have us doing. But lower level emotions, such as a background sense of stress or excitement, also want us to move, though perhaps minimally. This movement may manifest as nervous throat clearing or hair pulling or scratching or lip biting. So think carefully about any times when you might typically dine on your own flesh. Is it more likely to happen when you're tired, upset, angry or worried? What emotions are producing this particular emotion? Tip two, stop lip biting, but keep moving. So knowing your own danger times and planning to break the habit is a first step. So Ted was a client of mine and he bit his lips often, usually when he was anxious about his work. And he noticed that he was more likely to lip bite in the evenings after work, in the hour before eating his evening meal. Uh, since his emotion wanted motion, I suggested he use this danger hour to tend his garden before eating. Okay. So rigorous digging and focused planting meant that his need to move, brought about through stress, was now being met constructively, channeled in another way. It was a start and certainly helped him diminish his lip biting. Tip number three, deal with stress directly. When we relax completely, we can find real stillness. As you rest deeply and stress chemicals within your uh, system diminish, your arms, legs and back muscles all relax and so become still and peaceful. No fight, no flight, just stillness. Okay, so even minimal stress-induced movement can stop. The fact is, when you've uh, when you become that relaxed, you don't feel like moving. The more relaxed you feel in the day, the less you'll feel the need uh, for unnecessary moving or lip biting. As is the case with exercise, the benefits of relaxation don't just exist during the relaxation period itself, but carry over in, for many hours after the relaxation session. If you take time out to relax for 20 minutes a day, you'll feel more relaxed for many hours afterwards. 
regular relaxation is vital, so listen to a, a um, calming audio track or download. And if possible, relax before a period when lip biting had typically been more likely to happen. Tip number four, use the scramble technique. The more we do something, as you've inevitably noticed, anything at all, the more automatic it becomes. And the more we do it unthinkingly, we become good at doing our habits, and that includes bad habits. So sometimes the habitual pattern can be so automated that it sort of runs on, on tracks, so to speak. And it continues even after you've dealt with the stresses in your life. You know, the, the habit remains even if the instigator of the habit has fallen away. Okay. When we talk about reprogramming the mind, we really mean breaking an old pattern in order to reintroduce greater flexibility. And everything we do can be broken down into parts. For example, I asked Ted to teach me how he did his lip biting. How did he know when to start and how did he know when to finish? At what point do you stop lip biting? Okay. After some thought, we'd broken his lip biting pattern down into these um, following steps. So his first step, and yours might be different, but this was for him, was number one, a building sense of tension in his whole body. Okay. Step number two, suddenly catching himself biting his lips. So it was an unconscious thing. He'd catch himself doing it. Number three, feeling an initial sense of relief. Four, wanting to bite some more. Five, starting to feel pain and sometimes notice blood. Six, increasing pain. Seven, stopping either when his lips were so, were so painful that he couldn't do it anymore or he became distracted by something else. I then asked Ted to close his eyes as I read out all his lip biting steps in order. As I did so, I asked Ted to imagine the feeling of each step in turn without actually biting his lips. So he was accessing the steps of his pattern okay, in order to start, to start with. And we did this a couple of times to make sure it felt right, that we, you know, we had got the steps down in order. Then we began to scramble the pattern. So I got him to start at step six, then to get a sense of number one, the very first in initiating step, then number seven, and pretty soon the whole pattern had become so scrambled up in his mind that he couldn't get the feeling of the old pattern back. It couldn't run in the old way anymore. We'd scrambled, we'd spoilt the um, pattern of, of lip biting. And he felt that this was the single most powerful factor in helping him stop lip biting. So write out your steps, which can be feelings, actions, or both, then close your eyes and practice accessing the feelings and imagining the actions for each step. Do this in order to begin with, then start to mix it up until it feels difficult to access the old pattern. Okay, so incredibly powerful technique. Tip number five, use self-hypnosis to stop lip biting. Now actually, the scrambling technique is a hypnotic induction in itself. A hypnotic induction and technique can sometimes be one and the same. But there are other ways to use hypnosis to help you stop biting your lips. Okay, so I'm not saying you do this now, but when you do do it, you can close your eyes and focus your mind on really connecting to your lips, almost as if you can talk directly to them and tell them, and this doesn't sound so crazy when you're actually doing hypnosis, that from now on you're going to protect them from the teeth because they are not food. Next, in hypnosis, talk to your teeth and tell them that they are very useful but have been counterproductive in some ways and that your lips now need them to focus just on useful chewing of actual nourishment. Then begin to visualize yourself from the outside in situations in which you used to lip chew, but now watch your lips and teeth living in harmony, respecting one another, and you looking so much more generally relaxed and at ease in life. You know, the unconscious mind is amazing. And Ted, this client that I was telling you about, had uh, been my last client of the morning. An hour and a half later, I bit into my own lip. And at that point, it suddenly dawned on me 
not just as an idea, but as a reality, how painful it must have been for Ted for all those years. So the unconscious mind works sometimes in mysterious ways. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to know when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Terrell of Uncommon Knowledge and Hypnosis downloads.com. And if you'd like to try some of my personal development products, head over to hypnosisdownloads.com and take a look around. And thanks for watching.